there's a lot of tech out there. There's so many different types of virtualization technology out there that it can be a little bit overwhelming at the quantity, but also which one is best for me? Which one is best for my environment? But first, picture this. You're in your superhero cape. We're all superheroes in technology. But did you know that you can manage your technology from anywhere, from your phone, and you can even use your voice? Well, Pulseway is the only IT management software that can be fully controlled by the power of your voice. It completely makes it possible. You don't have to now go to each individual space, to multiple locations, to put out those fires. With Pulseway's mobile app, you can actually monitor control and even yell at your device anytime, anywhere. It's essentially like having your own personal IT genie, your own personal assistant directly in your pocket. But that's not all. Pulsar even has a whole range of automation features behind the scenes. Essentially, you can now send out all your minions to do your work. All of these mundane, repetitive tasks, you having to log in to individual devices, it can do software updates, system maintenance. Pulseway's automation is a force to be ready. With. And now thanks to Pulsar, you can even transform from an IT geek to an IT superhero. Long gone are those days of you having to click on multiple systems to see how things are going. Now you can solve problems with a single tap and save the day. You can start your free trial and get a special discount. Click on the link down below of this video description. Desktop, application, and server virtualization. And what this essentially means, you can install virtualization software onto a desktop, it doesn't have to be a desktop, a desktop or a laptop, onto a Windows computer, onto a Mac computer. Then you've got application virtualization, where you're now virtualizing an application. You're providing a virtual copy of that app. So rather than physically installing that app on 20 computers, you could virtualize it, and then those 20 computers could access a virtual copy of that application being virtually managed on some sort of a application virtualization platform. We'll talk about that as well. And then you've got the server virtualization where you've now got a physical piece of big tech and then you install virtualization technology onto it. This thing called the hypervisor where you're now converting this thing into a virtual server, into a host. And we'll talk about that. But let's talk about the first one, desktop virtualization. Now, when we say desktop virtualization, we're not talking about virtualizing desktops because you can do that. You essentially can set up a server. You could set up on a desktop, install virtualization software, and then create Windows VMs, Windows 10, Windows 11 virtual machines, or Linux Ubuntu virtual machines, which are almost the desktop equivalent of the software. We're not talking about that. We're talking about installing virtual software onto a desktop operating system and then deploying virtual machines within a desktop. You've got a computer. You've got a computer at home. You've got, uh, it's running Windows, you know, Windows 10, Windows 11. You've got the Mac, it's running the Mac OS version. Even you've got Linux potentially as well. But then what you can do is you can actually install some virtualization software directly onto that computer. On a Windows or a Linux computer, you've got VMware Workstation. Now, VMware is one of the biggest platforms around virtualization, and we'll be covering a fair bit of VMware because they're sort of in the space of uh, desktops and servers across platforms, the big one out there. But Workstation would be one, where you go and you download VMware Workstation, you install it, and then you can actually build virtual machines directly on your Windows 11. So you've got Windows 11 running, but then you've got Workstation sitting behind that, and then you can build whatever server you want. You could build a Windows box, you could build Windows Server, you could install Linux Ubuntu, you could install Kali Linux, you could install any of these other flavors. Another popular virtualization platform for Windows, but also it comes for the Mac and for Linux, is Oracle's VirtualBox. Again, another behemoth. I mean, Oracle were really, really known for the database side of things and doing the database stuff, but they do virtualization and they do it very, very well. Very similar. You go and grab the software and then you can run virtual machines directly on your computer. Now we did mentioned VirtualBox is available on the Mac, but also on the Mac, you've got VMware's equivalent to Workstation called VMware Fusion. Why have they called it Fusion on the Mac and Workstation on Windows? I've got no idea. It's sort of the same thing, but the Mac version, VMware Fusion, you buy it, you download it, you install it, you can build Windows boxes, Linux boxes directly on your Mac. The other one, which I think is that little bit better, is Parallels. Parallels works really, really good on the Mac. You can download Parallels, you can install it, and then you can deploy 
as many virtual machines as you want. And the great thing about Parallels is you've got your Mac OS operating system, but then you're at work and at work they say, I must use Windows. I need this application because it's only available on Windows or at home. Your friends give you some stuff. They give you the newest game and it doesn't work on the Mac because it's the Mac. It doesn't have the same software in some cases. So what you do is you install Parallels, you then build a virtual machine and then you just run it side by side on your Mac. That's desktop virtualization. And then you've got application virtualization. Rather than you installing the full operating system, and then building VMs, you build virtual apps, connect to a virtualization platform, and then you've got the app running in a virtual form. A perfect one that I recommend for this is Citrix. Now Citrix is a great platform, which we'll talk about a little bit when it comes to the server side of things, but they've got this thing called a Zen suite of products. And one of them is Zen app. And this is a version of application virtualization where you can set up a whole pool of servers behind the scenes, set up with a farm for application virtualization, application hosting, and then computers on a network connect to that and the apps are stored and hosted that way. But then the nice thing is that all the grunt is being done on the server side. So if you need a really grunty application, let's say you've got AutoCAD, AutoCAD which is a architecture design software, that needs some grunt. And sometimes computers cannot handle that grunt. So you do it on a server and the server has a whole bunch of grunt. That's application virtualization. The next server virtualization. And here we get into the servers themselves being converted into a virtualization server or a host. And then you can build VMs, you build Windows, Linux within a server. Bigger ones are gonna be your VMware. And this is called VMware's ESXi. It's using this thing called vSphere. You've got vCenter. The whole VMware stuff is a whole other thing. And I've got a whole video on talking about VMware if you are interested in learning a little bit more about VMware. And then essentially what you do is you have the VMware ESXi. It's an actual fully fledged operating system. You then install that onto this physical computer and then you convert that physical computer into a hypervisor. That's sort of a fancy name. You've then got Citrix. We mentioned the Zen stuff, XCN. Well, that had Zen app. Well, now you've also got Zen server, Citrix Zen server. And very similar to VMware's ESXi, you have the operating system that you download. Essentially, it's a fully fledged operating system and then you install it on a physical server and then you convert it into a Zen server host. One of the nice things about Zen server or the whole Zen stuff is that it is open source. So it's a fully open source hypervisor, which is really, really nice. And it is free. ESXi, VMware's ESXi is also free, but if you wanna use it in a little bit more of the corporate world and you wanna take advantage of the vCenter side of things, which is a whole other discussion, then you do have to look at licensing and there's other bits and pieces there. And then you've also got Proxmox and this is Proxmox VE. Also similar to the Zen side of things, the Citrix one, this is also open source. It's also got the full web-based interface, allows you to manage all your virtual machines, all your storage and all of your network and it is great. And then the last one that we'll cover a little bit here is Microsoft's Hyper-V. And Hyper-V, you install it directly within your Windows server. So I've got a physical box running Windows Server 2020 22, and then I install the Hyper-V components or the add-ons, the roles into that server. And I essentially convert that server into a Hyper-V server. And all of this management of Hyper-V is done from within the Windows side. Which one is best? And the reality is they all have their pros and cons. They're all awesome in their own way. They all have their advantages. They all have their disadvantages. Me personally, the one that I like best is VMware. I mean, I think it is a great, robust, very, very good platform used it in lots of companies. I use it at home, in my home lab, not discounting the others, go check those out as well. But for me, VMware, I think is a superior virtualization product. If you wanna know more about VMware, you wanna know about ESXi, how to configure it, how to use vCenter, how to customize it. I've got a full length training course on my Udemy. I've got the link down below, along with a whole bunch of other training courses on other tech. If you like this video, if you like my channel, Tech with Emilio, would love it if you also subscribe. Click on the bell, I release videos every single week. So by clicking on the bell, you won't miss out on anything. But until next time, stay tuned for the next video as we continue to talk all things tech.